Okay, John, so we are at the OAC Combine number three. Have you been to the other – we got the first two. So Anthony's been to a couple of them. I, this is the first one I've been to. I okay. Just, I actually just got back from deployment overseas like last week. How long were you gone for? Uh, just three months. Just – okay, when, when a guy <laughs> leads with just three months, I know that yeah. – I know you've been in it. You're a hardcore guy, then. Yeah, I've been gone uh, a couple of times, a little bit longer than that. What so, branch do you serve in? Uh, Air Force. Air Force. So, thank you for your service. Thank you. Thanks. What, what are you? What are you doing there? So I'm a C-130 pilot up at the uh, Mansfield Ohio Air National. With the Park. massive, the massive plane. And not the massive ones. They're they're kind of middle of the road as far as the cargo stuff. It's a massive plane. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's a massive plane. <laughs> Where were you actually deployed? Can you tell me that? Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, deployed in uh, at Ali Al Salim Air Base in Kuwait. Okay. Um, it's not hot there, is it? Oh my god. Is that, does it get 125 it, it degrees? It was 125 degrees with blowing dust storms. It was disgusting. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. When you were there for, were you there for three months? Uh, we were over there working for about two months, and then it takes us about a couple weeks on either end to get back. Just because we got an island hop, because the the plane is the range is the range isn't that far, is it? No, it's, it's not as not, fast. It's not. So we stopped in uh, Greece. We stopped in um, uh, Belfast and Iceland, and then well, because yeah, it's, it's you have to you come it. back yeah. roundabout. Oh yeah. I don't yeah. know if people know anything about the Atlantic or the Pacific oh, Oceans. Yeah. They're massive, and mm -hmm. you have to act like you're saying when you're talking about the plane you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It has to hop. Yep. You have to island hop. Yeah. People don't get that. No. No. What's, what is your range on that? So, uh, I go by hours because we, we we actually stretched it out. We, You can go about 11 hours, but we were fine oh about God. nine hours on those planes. And they're not built for comfort, are man. They are, they are uh, cargo planes, and the, the plus they're also from, like, the 80s, so... It's old. And it's like a, like in the back, it's like if anyone's going to travel in the back, it's like a jump seat, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like, yeah, it's, true it's not it's like not a, comfy. yeah, it's a jump seat. It's mm -hmm. not a, it's like what, for, for the lame and a jump seat is like yeah. what they put the, the flight attendants it's, in. It's the cargo yeah. setting and stuff yes. like Yes, it's, yeah. it's not much. No. Not much. No. Okay. So. so, so, okay. Being a father, being deployed, you're missing a lot of wrestling. You come back, you get to digest a lot of wrestling. Sure. What are these uh, OAC combines like for you and what did you think so far today so of course today like we've worked with ross and we've worked with uh, logan a bunch of times and i know that anytime i bring anthony there uh he gets you know the best looks and not just um not just the wrestling technique but i we're pretty close with ross and we know like there's a handful of people i would trust with my son with and that we know ross well enough man he is hands down one of the best people you're going to know like not just wrestling coach, he's, he's got that down. He did some head hand stuff today. Yeah. Oh, and getting he, to a tie that's yeah. super boring and monotonous, mm -hmm. but it is some of the best technique exactly. to get a kid not to reach up and grab somebody's head, which is our yeah. first reaction in wrestling a lot of people. And I was like, this is what my kid, I want my kids learning. But he also knows how to reinforce it. I mean, high school kids are a little bit more mature, but with the younger guys, with a kid my age, they'll get bored. So he's able, he, and I don't know how he does it. He did an excellent job today. Yeah, I mean, he knows how to, you know, get re-engage like an 11 year old kid, you know, with something that's monotonous. It, and he, he'll tell us like a two second story and just be like, do, do, do. And then like, then he'll call on the guy across the room and make sure he's paying attention. Like he does a great job of keeping everybody engaged and, you know, keeping them up with the, what seems to be monotonous technique and um, it's a it's been yeah. but it's amazing yeah oh it's like what it's, what they, it's the it's, building blocks of how everybody should start it's, it's those little things that if they can graft it when they're this age head position head position grab you know, a hand body, down block like where your hips right need to be. don't reach with the same can, hand as the lead leg just can, basics if they can master this stuff as as young bucks then when they get older and they have to deal with weight management when they have to deal with conditioning a little bit more when they have to deal with high school grades, when they have a whole bit, bunch of other stressors, this is going to be a little bit more natural. Okay. So, yeah, like I'm very, very impressed. I've always been impressed with what Ross and with what Logan do, but I've also been keeping up. So we sent Anthony to uh, the Corey Collat camp because – Kerry Kerry Collat. Or yeah. Kerry Collat. Yeah. Uh, I sent, we sent Anthony and Grady over to that camp and, you know – I did it just because it's another service academy exposure. Huh. Um, are, are, are you a service academy graduate? Yeah, oh, went, you are. You are Air Force. I went, I went to the Coast Guard Academy. Oh, did you? Yeah. 
Really? Yeah, so I went there for, you know. I'm, they have D3 wrestling. Mm -hmm. People don't know that. Oh. And Coast Guard Academy's got D3 and wrestling. A, and it's a crazy, uh, it's really good. Like, they just got a new coach, uh, uh, Coach Bradland there. And I never wrestled. I was, really? I played football. I, nice. I went to school down in Mole. I played football down there. Are oh, you from Cincinnati? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, um, so then I went to the Coast Guard Academy and played football there. Nice. And I was you go from big pressure Ohio school to not much pressure Division Three yeah. New England football. It was it was a fun time. It's still a service academy, nonetheless. Oh, it's it's really tough. It's it was, a really tough it, it, balance of life yeah. and and how and you're in the dorms yeah. for four years. Yeah, and it's it's a tough thing for an eighteen year old to do. Is just leave home. You're doing three three humongous life stressors. You're leaving home. You're joining the military, and you're taking a huge workload of college credits. Um, so. And I think that's by design. You know, they just try to overwhelm you. And like, I, somehow I wasn't the smartest guy there, but I, you know, I just stuck with it and, you know, I made it through and I, and I flew the C-130s for the Coast Guard for about 12 years. And then, you know, home came calling and the uh, Ohio Air National Guard had a spot that was opened up, so. So will you be able to retire in like eight years? Yeah, pretty short, like yeah. five, about five years. Five years, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. That's well, a really thanks, neat, thanks. neat thing. Because I don't, I've never talked to a Coast Guard Academy grad. Right. I talked to all these other grads, and Air I, Force Academy, talked well, to the Naval Academy, I talked to the West Point guys. And, I, and, I, and uh, you know, a little bit of a confession. I've been listening to all you guys' podcasts, like, while I was on base. I'm in. Oh, Did yeah. you know I'm in on it, right? I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm like, know, I'm in on it. I really I, think it's prestigious. I know who Seth Miller is. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But, but, awesome. Yeah, so... You know, I listen to all these these guys that you bring on. I was like, man, if you could just get the word out about the Coast Guard Academy. Yeah. Like, one I would like other... to get him. I like to talk to the head coach. Yeah, yeah. I would, I'm, I'm a, I mean, now, now I'm actively going to seek him out. Well, it's just the thing I do. It's an interesting opportunity for guys from Ohio. Unless you're up on the Cleveland coast, like, not much is said about the Coast Guard. Yeah, no, you're right. So, you're right. I agree. Especially, like, Division three opportunity like that. It's pretty, yeah, yeah it, it, it's different. Okay, so, last last okay. thing, last question I have for okay. you. Clear Fork Elite. Yes, sir. Um, Scotty Burnett brought his kids down, mm -hmm. and they did like a, a competition in your room. Yes. And he was like, "This, these guys are doing it right, man." Yeah. And he was talking about you guys, and he was really paying a lot of compliments yeah. to you guys. You got a standalone facility. He said, yes, sir. I, "I mean, I'm just yes, telling sir. you what he told me." Mm -hmm. But he was really impressed with what you guys are doing. Tell me what you're doing in Clear Fork in North Central Ohio. So we was that a good was that a good yeah, North Central yeah, okay, okay yeah so Clear Fork's about an hour north up seventy one you get off at uh, exit one sixty five and you would hang on right um, and you know as far as the, the the number of kids and the the traditional program history it just really hasn't been there well uh, myself and Rick well Rick came up with the idea to just have a bit more of a competitive there, there's always been a very very large showing for youth wrestling uh, you know we. Rick and I had a bright idea of, you know, turning up the volume as much as our kids can handle. And it's, and it's different for everybody, at least in our room. You know, we got a couple guys who do the regional, national circuits. Uh, we got a couple guys who qualify for state and are just ecstatic about that. And we got a couple guys who, you know, go an hour north, an hour south, and, you know, they get tougher that way. So uh, we, so what we do is we just try to put our kids in spots that are difficult for them that we know they can handle um and put ha having that little five on five tournament you know keep you know where it was you know you've got a match every five you know probably every 20 minutes you know yeah, he said it was bang 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 was, everybody's right was, on top right. of each other it he was, was pumped it was, well, he loved that well part of it was it, it was born by necessity with the covid regulations and there wasn't much going on as far as other i mean you guys uh, the oac knows like it was just hard to put stuff yeah. together due to regulations. Yeah, it really was. And, and we were we were limited with the numbers of folks we could have in the door, but it was like, you know, we we uh, took a few kids to Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and you know we did they did a five on five tournament. And they're like, this was really crazy, and it was such a small room, but we could figure out a way to make it work if we have a facility. Well, we've got a pretty good facility that you know a lot of our local. Um, the local guys around town really put a, a lot of effort into, you know, a building was provided, 
but you know it needed all the work needed yeah electrical plumbing you made it masonry and we had a lot of help from the the local businesses who saw the potential because i mean there's a wrestling side and there's a you know basketball and batting cages yeah. and you know they got all the all the different sports are practicing there both little guys and high school so i mean it everybody saw the potential so everybody in town pitched in so it really was a community effort to bring it all together um but you know the so we had the facility and then we kind of tweaked the format a little bit um and then you know we just kind of sat down and planned out everything in advance and you know and i think just because people were just dying for competition like yeah. we had teams from pennsylvania show up we had teams from he, scotty like, bernard could not yeah. say enough good things yeah it was, he was super impressed like, and Washington we're, State. from where Washington State. oh we had Jeez, wow you had a team from washington we had washington State. state wow so it was we didn't expect it to get to be that way but when we when we got done and we're sitting down at the bar afterward and we're like what just happened <laughs> yeah. all right so, all right Clinic's uh, over. Yes, sir. I got to get the Rex still. Yes, sir. Do you got anything else for me? No, I don't, thank you guys so much for putting this all together. Don't walk out before you can get stickers. I got yeah. a bunch of stickers for you yeah. guys, a bunch of Ohio stuff. Probably yeah. a Barbarian Hour cat podcast. It sounds like you're listening. Okay. I'm going to hook you up before you take off, all right? Oh, perfect. All right, hit it. Good thank luck you. to you guys, all right? Thanks, Seb.